Hey guys, Shark here from Sharky Tech, and in today's video, what we're gonna do is we are gonna be sharing 150 plus tips, tricks, features, hidden features, security features, camera features, S Pen features for your Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. This is gonna be a long video. So here's a quick breakdown of what to expect. We will start with a few bonus features, then in the next section, I will be sharing some high-level S Pen features. That's gonna be followed by 50 tips to customize and configure your S23 Ultra with precision. And then we will move on to powerful camera features, actual hidden features, and a whole bunch of security features. After you're done watching this video, you'll be an expert and you are gonna be able to squeeze out the maximum ownership benefits for this fantastic phone. Let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so let's set you up with a bunch of bonus features before we even dive into the details. Now, the first two bonus features have to do with your phone application. So launch the phone application, and what you wanna do is you wanna tap on the settings option here and go into the settings. And what you can do here is there's a special menu here. It's known as answering and ending calls. When you click it, it allows you to assign physical buttons on your phone like the volume rocker and the power button to actually take calls or end calls. So for example, when you enable this option here, okay, if somebody calls you, instead of swiping on the screen to accept the call, you can press the physical button, the volume button here, up or down to take that call. Personally, I like this because it gives me a nice tactile feedback. Additionally, after you're done taking a call and you wanna end the call, you can activate this feature and that's gonna allow you to end the call with the power button on the side. So that's number one, but I do wanna let you know, just be careful with this option here. Sometimes if you're in a call and you accidentally press the power button, it might end your call. Personally, I'm used to it, so I have no issues, but some people did have problems with this before where they accidentally canceled the call by pressing the power button. So that's number one. Number two is much more cooler. So let me go to one of my contacts here. I think I have a test contact here. So this option allows you to change the ringtone for any contact. You can have a custom ringtone or a custom song or a custom anything. So here's a test contact. I clicked on it, tap on I, and then tap on edit, and then tap on view more and scroll all the way down and you can see right here it says ringtone. Now you can click on this and what you have is you have the option to pick a custom ringtone for that particular contact. So when that contact calls you, that's the song, the one that you picked is the one that's gonna play. Now there's a couple options. So you can pick from existing options. These are existing ringtones you can assign to your contact, but a lot of people prefer to actually use a custom song. So it can be a song from your favorite artist or whatever, doesn't matter. You go to sound picker, again, by clicking the plus, it goes to the sound picker. And then if you have songs downloaded on your phone, they're gonna appear all over here. And then you can pick any custom song and you can even preview that song before you set it. So you pick the custom song. You can also browse through albums, artists, and folders. Again, I got nothing on this phone right now, but if you have it, it's gonna show up here and then you click on done. Okay, you go back and you tap on save. Now when this contact calls you, the test contact, it's gonna have a custom ringtone, fantastic customization. Let's move on. So one of the main features of the S23 Ultra is the powerful S Pen. So let me start by sharing five powerful S Pen features that will blow your mind, that's gonna maximize your experience with your phone. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to unlock your S23 Ultra with the S Pen. So here's my phone, I'm gonna double tap, now it's locked, okay? I'm gonna grab my S Pen, I'm gonna click the button, and that's simply going to unlock the phone. As you can see, it first activates the lock screen and then unlocks and goes inside the actual phone. So let me show that to you one more time. It's locked, press the button, unlocks it, and you're good to go in the screen. So let's see how to set this up. So you go to your settings, and then you go into advanced features, and then you go into the S Pen, all right? Once you're in the S Pen, you scroll down, and you go to more S Pen settings. Once you do that, 
you're gonna see the S Pen Unlock feature. So I just turned off the setting. I'm gonna re-enable it. When you re-enable this, it is gonna ask you to put in your PIN number. That's the PIN number you use to unlock your phone. So once I do that, I tap on continue. Now it is enabled. And now if I lock the screen, what is gonna happen is I'm gonna click the button, okay? When you click the button for the first time after activating the feature, it is gonna ask you to put your PIN number one more time for final confirmation. Or you can just do your fingerprint. So I'm gonna put my pin, tap on okay. Now it is actually set, okay? And then, now I can grab the pen, click the button, go to the lock screen, unlocks the phone. Of course, if you restart your phone, you still have to put your pin number in, if you update your phone and stuff like that. And if your S Pen disconnects from the phone using that Bluetooth connection, that feature is gonna deactivate that is just gonna be for security. And let's say you actually wanna disable the feature. Just one thing I'm gonna show you guys, back in the advanced features, under S Pen, and if you go back into more S Pen settings, you when you disable this, it's still gonna ask you for pin confirmation. Just something to keep in mind, but otherwise, it's a fantastic feature. You're doing something, you turn off the phone, and you just wanna go inside, I can just press the button, and it just goes straight into my phone. And I do wanna let you know this process is happening via Bluetooth. And you can see, if I go over here to S Pen, you can see the S Pen is connected to the phone, but it, the phone knows it is removed because it is not in the actual chassis. If this is disconnected, that feature is going to get disabled. So that's feature number one. Let's move on to feature number two. The next thing that's pretty amazing is some note-taking features so of course you can press this button and you can bring up the air command menu from here. You can create a note right from here. Okay, you can start writing. Or let me just X this out. You can simply go into Samsung Notes, which is this application. Let me put this out here for a minute. You can launch this application. You can create a new note and you can start writing and you can pick various pencils and pens. Now. One thing I like is if you really want to use this note-taking application uh, for the classroom or maybe for engineering, for software engineering, whatever, you have the ability to draw some really nice flow charts. If you, at the bottom we have a bar, if you scroll all the way over, there is an icon here that says auto fix shapes. So if you click this and you draw any shape, it will convert that shape to its perfect form. So triangle, Okay, a rectangle, whatever you have, it's going to make it perfect. Let's go to the next page here. Uh, let's uh, do a another rectangle, I mean a uh, square. Okay, inside the square you can have this, you can have this, and you can have this. Okay, so it's going to make everything perfect for you. Obviously, if you don't like what it did for you, you just undo some, that and do it again. And it's going to make the other perfection for you. Even works with an arrow, so if you draw an arrow... Look what it's going to do. Boom. Okay, so great for flowchart and stuff like that for the classroom, for the workplace, whatever. Let's move on to the next tactic. All right, the next feature has to do with your calendar where you can do some amazing things with the S Pen. Uh, there's two ways to access and activate this feature. First, you can simply go to the calendar. So I'm going to bring it up right here. Okay, so here's my calendar. You might see this view. Okay. If you have this view, make sure to expand it, and then you're going to see this icon on the top. That icon is the right on the calendar icon with the S Pen. So if I click on this, I can start writing on my calendar just as if I was writing on a piece of paper. On top of that, I can zoom in and get really down to it and put some really nice details. Okay, so for every day of the calendar, I can do whatever I want. I can write stuff and whatever, mark stuff. I can check stuff off like this. And when you save this, okay, and let's just exit the calendar for a second. I'm going to go back into it, calendar. When you go back into it, you're going to see those writings on your calendar. No other phone that I know of is capable of doing something like this, except for Samsung phones with the S Pen functionality. Now that's one way to activate, just simply launch the calendar. Another thing you can do is you can bring up the air command menu by pressing this button. So I press the button, I get the air command menu. 
Right now, the option is not there. So what you do is you click on the Add button at the bottom. You click on Add. It takes you to the Shortcuts screen. And look at this. We have this right on Calendar option. You click on it. It shows up at the bottom here. Now you're done. Let's exit this. Now I'm going to bring up back the air command by clicking the button. And now I have right on Calendar right here. So without having to actually launch the application, I can just press, go right inside, and start writing, as you can see, on my calendar. This is incredible. So two ways to get that done. Absolutely fantastic feature. Let's move on to the next tactic. The next thing I want to show you guys has to do with previewing stuff when you hover the S Pen over items. So for example, if I go to my gallery application here, here's a couple videos and a couple photos. If you have the certain setting enabled, you can hover over objects. So I'm not going to touch the screen. I'm just going to hover. And look, you're able to get a preview of that uh, photo. And even two settings you can access right from the preview. Now, if I were to do that on a video, let's just do it on this one. The video actually starts to play. You can watch the video in this little preview window, even though I'm not touching anything. I'm just hovering over the uh, item. So let me show you how to enable this. It does work in other apps as well. So if I go to my settings, advanced features, again, S Pen, this is called as the air view. So basically you can see there's additional options. You can do previews and you can see the pointer. You can see pointers only and you can see preview only. Pointer means this little pointer that you shows up on the screen. You're not going to see it right now until you have your phone, but there's a little pointer that actually is indicating where the pen is pointing before it touches the screen. But I like to have both of these enabled. And look, you can even use this to scroll. You can go to the gallery. You can go to calendar. Let me just bring up calendar here. Calendar. And I can actually preview calendar entries as well, like this. So anything that you added, you can see it pops up like this without me touching the actual screen. Another great little feature that can make things easier. Now you will be using your S Pen a lot, I hope, because you have this powerful tool. One thing that you want to do is you actually want to customize the Air Command menu. Again, when you press the button, the Air Command menu pops just like this. At the bottom, you're going to see settings. You click on the settings, and the first thing I want you guys to do is choose a style. So Air Command you can have a standard style, the one that you just saw. Let me see if it works right here. Okay, this one. Or you can have a compact size. If I click over here, now I get a nice and compact size. But even if I hover over this, it'll tell me what it is. So you don't have to touch the screen. You just hover over it like magic. It tells you what that is. So that's one thing you want to do. Choose the menu style for the air command as you use it in the future. But additionally, you want to do the shortcuts. So what shortcuts do you want in the air command? So I can X all these off for a second here. And I'm going to tell you guys, you have shortcuts for the S Pen specific features. And you can shortcut to apps as well. So I can have, let's say I use this app a lot and this app a lot. I can have them as a shortcut. And then if I go up, let's say I want to create notes all the time, write on the calendar all the time. And let's say I want to do smart select all the time. So now those five features are in my compact air command menu as you can see and if I hover over it you can see exactly what is what and of course you can add even more it's going to be up to you I can just launch an application or I can just launch a feature like the smart select as you can see which selects any portion of the screen and takes a screenshot you can edit or save it and stuff like that okay all right so in this section I'm going to share 50 plus features to precision customize your S23 Ultra and a whole bunch of other cool features. All right, so the very first thing I want you guys to do is go to the settings, alrighty, and then scroll all the way down and go to about phone. And you want to quickly make sure that you give your phone a proper name. So by default, it's going to look something like this. What you want to do is tap on edit and then give your phone a name. The important thing with this step is the fact that once you change the name of your phone, first of all, it's going to be personalized to you. But then if you're doing anything with your phone via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, this is the name that's going to appear and it's going to make it easy 
to recognize the phone. So I'm just going to say in my case, Saki 23 Ultra. So now anytime I connect this to a Bluetooth device or do a Wi-Fi connection or trying to share files with other Samsung users, this is the name that's going to appear and I know exactly what's going on. So tap that Saki S23 Ultra. And one more cool thing is if you have a white phone or a black phone, you're going to see that image right here, which is pretty cool. So this one happens to be a white slash cream phone, and you can see that being reflected on the icon right here. So that's a nice little touch. All right, let's move on. All right, the next thing I want to talk about has to do with the home screen. So normally when you want to go to your app drawer, you can simply pull up from the screen like this, and it goes to the app drawer. Now here's the problem. When you swipe down, it also goes to the app drawer. So that's redundant. I'm going to show you how to change what happens when you swipe down. So press and hold on the screen, tap on the settings, go all the way down and look for this option. Swipe down for notification panel. So when I enable this, now when I go out, look at this. When I swipe up, it goes to the app drawer, which is great. But when I swipe down, this time it brings down the notifications panel. I can swipe down one more time and it gives me all my quick toggles right here. And while we are here, when you tap this button here, you are able to make some modifications to the status bar on the top. So if I tap on status bar, look at what I can do here. I can tap on this, for example, and I can disable the battery percentage indicator, which personally I prefer. So I enable that, but I can also tap over here and I can change what notifications will appear on the top over here on the left side. So I can do none and that makes sure this area just remains nice and clean or you can just show number of notifications. So that's one notification right now or you can do show me the three most recent notifications. So what's going to happen is if you have more than one notification, you're going to see three icons as opposed to just a number three when you just say number of notifications or you can just do all and this is going to be fully crowded all the way uh, to the punch hole cutout. So that's one thing you can do on the top as well. So let's do that. Let's just do number for now and move on to the next tactic. The next thing I like to do is I like to customize my side key, which is right over here. This is very important because you can customize this key to do a lot of things. By default, when you press this, it turns off the phone. When you press it again, turns on the phone. But now we can add additional functionality to the side key. Let me show you how to do that. Settings, advanced features, side key, and look at the options. I can double press this side key to take certain actions. The first available action, if I enable this, is if I double tap, it is going to launch the camera. Most people like that. However, you can also open an application. So I can do the calculator application. So now when I double tap, it is just going to launch that application that you like to use all the time. But there's one more super cool thing here that you can do. With this option here, instead of opening an application, you can actually activate uh, your flashlight. So if I choose this option, look at what happens. Double tap flashlight on. Okay, so this is going to be great for nighttime. So for example, if you are coming to your house, and it's dark and you're trying to find that keyhole but you can't see it double tap boom you got that light okay then double tap to turn it off so it's a great little flashlight option you can set with the side key the other thing you can do with the side key is if you press and hold it just launches bixby now i don't use bixby if you want to use it that's great but the other option is you can do this and then when you press and hold it just brings the power menu from where we can turn off, restart, let me press and hold, or do an emergency call as you can see. Fantastic, let's move on. Other things I like to set up with my phone before I start to use it is to enable double tap to turn off, double tap to turn on, okay? Now by default, these may be turned off. So what you do is you go to your settings and then you go into advanced features and under advanced features, you go to motions and gestures and you want to make sure that you double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off the screen is in fact enabled. And on top of that, I like to enable lift to wake as well. So when the phone is turned on, let's say you're doing something and you want to quickly glance at what's going on. Of course, you can double tap to look at it if you want. 
or you can just pick it up and that's going to lift the wake it's going to wake up the screen you can look at it put it down and move on and it's going to turn off by itself so that's the lift to wake feature and then finally under these settings here's one of my favorite features mute with gestures so if i'm getting an incoming call let's say the phone rings right now i can either tap on the decline or whatever but if i don't want to tap on decline i just want to mute the incoming call i can just grab the phone and put it on the table like this and that's going to mute that call in fact even if you have an alarm instead of snoozing that alarm you can mute it just by uh, putting the phone backwards like this so that's the option uh, with mute with gestures you can also mute the phone by putting your hand over the screen like this it's going to sense your hand and it's going to mute the phone call or the alarm or any other notification that is screaming at you now the next thing has to do with the recent app area so when i pull up my uh recent apps if i bring this up this area what's going to happen is at the bottom you're going to see four applications that are suggested to you based on how often you use certain applications now if you don't want this here and you want a cleaner look you can tap on this button here go into the settings and you can actually uh, disable the recommended apps so now when i pull this up i'm not going to have the recommended apps at the bottom it gives me a little bit cleaner look as you can see so that's that s pen has a lot of features but here's one of my favorites so let's say you want to go to the calendar application it has to do with the calendar application so let me launch the application real quick calendar okay and look at what you can do over here i can grab my s pen and when you're in the calendar make sure you are in the expanded view like this then you tap on the pen icon right here and you're able to write on the calendar right away as if you were writing on a piece of paper you can even zoom in so you can see even more detail and write precisely uh, your plans for that exact day and then you can exit out when you're done you can change colors from here as you can see i can have different colors so i can color code my entries with my own hand writing and the good thing is when you save this stuff let's just exit the calendar real quick and go back in there to the calendar application it is going to show up there as if it was a paper calendar and by the way if you tap this then you can start to zoom in all right and you can start to edit and do whatever fantastic feature love it let's move on now there's an extremely useful widget that you can use uh, if you press and hold on the screen and if you tap on widgets there's two widgets i want you guys to use the first one is going to be the smart suggestions so this is a smart widget when you grab this and dump it anywhere on the screen okay what's going to happen is tap to turn on the smart widgets let's just go like this tap on okay go back out what the phone is going to do it is going to continually suggest apps to you based on your usage and also based on the context so right now it knows these are the apps i've been playing with a lot so it is recommending them this is going to be a dynamic app tray so very useful to have it just in case for quick accessing applications that you use all the time the other widget you want to dump onto this uh screen is this one right here tap on widgets and that's the battery widget so if you have uh additional accessories like your phone your watch and your galaxy buds you can track the battery of all those guys right here okay now in my case it's not going to show up everything but it does show me the s23 ultras battery which is the phone itself shows me the battery level of the s pen and if i did have galaxy buds active they would show up right here as well as my galaxy watch so nice way uh, to fill your screen with some useful information the final thing i would add onto the screen is this one right here again pinch the screen or press and hold go to widgets all the way down somewhere let me look for this thing maybe not all the way down in the middle somewhere we have device care i tap on this guy and i grab one of these guys and i put them on the top now i got perfect trio of widgets as you can see this gives me a snapshot of my current storage use my current memory use and if i tap on this button it actually 
cleans up and refreshes my phone, optimizes my phone, frees up some memory, and makes my phone run faster. So having these widgets is going to be very nice to have, and you can just hide it on a screen uh, on the side. All right, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your brand new phone has a healthy battery. So what you can do is you can go to your settings, and then you want to scroll down to your battery and device care, and then scroll down just a little bit more, and there's going to be a menu here known as the Diagnostics menu. You click on this menu, it's going to take you to the Samsung Members Applications Diagnostics menu. And what you want to do is you want to scroll down and you want to find the battery status diagnostics test. You click on this guy, what it's going to do, it's going to run a quick test and it's going to make sure the brand new battery in your brand new phone is in fact in normal working status. You can see it says normal, life, it's supposed to say good, it gives you the capacity. If you see anything other than normal or good here, then what you want to do is you want to return that phone and get a replacement because if the battery is bad from the very beginning, you're looking at a defective phone. All right, so that's always the first thing I check with my new phones. Now let's move on and talk about the next tactic. Your Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is gonna have a gorgeous screen. You're gonna be watching movies, looking at high resolution photos. So let's set it up so you get the best and most clear image possible. First thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to get the best out of video. So go to the settings, and then scroll down and find advanced features. Once you find advanced features, you wanna scroll down a little bit more and you're gonna have this option here that says video brightness. You click on it, you're gonna have an option. You have the normal option and the bright option. This is great for watching certain movies at the highest quality. So what you can do is you can actually select the bright option. Once you select the bright option, it's gonna allow you to enable that feature for particular applications on your phone. So for example, let's say you're gonna watch a movie on HBO Max, you can enable this feature for HBO Max application. You can do it for YouTube application, Crunchyroll. In fact, whatever you install on your phone is gonna appear here as long as it is supported to use this great feature. So you choose Bright, and what happens is when you go into any one of those applications to watch a movie, it is going to make sure that the screen temporarily increases the brightness and also makes the colors more vibrant as you watch videos, which is gonna give you exceptional quality as you're watching movies or high definition videos. The next thing you wanna do is, again, the phone has fantastic stereo speakers. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to sounds and vibration, okay? You want to scroll down and you want to go to sound quality and effects. Once you go inside here, you want to make sure you enable Dolby Atmos. Okay, you can en enable or disable. Now when you go inside, here's where you can pick auto, movie, music, or voice. So if you want to use the Dolby Atmos experience, which gives you like a surround sound-like experience on your phone, you can enable this setting. Again, it's going to be great for watching movies and even playing games. So from here, you can pick exactly where you want this to apply to, or if you want it to apply to all three settings, you can choose auto and the phone will pick it for you and enable Dolby Atmos as you are doing one of these things, voice, music, movie, whatever. Now when you go back, you also want to make sure that you enable Dolby Atmos for gaming and it tells you right here that's going to get you realistic Dolby Atmos sound automatically when you play, when you launch and play a game, okay? So fantastic settings. Now going back into the display, one more thing you want to set up for maximum display clarity is going to be when you scroll down, you want to go into the screen resolution and you want to go for high definition WQHD+. Plus. That's going to give you the sharpest resolution, and the good news is the S23 Ultra's battery has significantly improved. So you can actually run your phone on the maximum brightness and still get a solid day off battery after charging your phone. So in the past, I usually kept it right here, but now with the S23 Ultra, I can have it here and not worry about the battery life. Tap and apply and forget about it. You're good to go. Now, one more important thing to set up is gonna be right over here, and that's your brightness settings. 
So you have an option to set up adaptive brightness. When you set up adaptive brightness based on ambient lighting, whether you're in the house or outside, this dial is going to go up and down automatically to get the perfect brightness for you. In my case, I like to set it up manually. I just disable this and I put this in the middle and then I can tweak it as I please when I'm outside or when I'm inside simply by pulling down the notifications panel twice and just tweaking it right here as necessary. Now on top of that, if you spend a lot of time outdoors with your phone, you also want to enable this feature known as extra brightness feature. This goes even beyond the maximum brightness and gives you additional brightness for daytime outdoors under sunlight so you can see your phone clearly even under direct sunlight. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you enable this, you see there was a quick boost in brightness. But if you bring this to maximum brightness, the phone is going to be pretty bright. But if you enable this, it even gives you an additional boost of brightness for even clearer outdoor performance. Okay, just keep that in mind. And again, you don't have to have this enabled all the time. You can just have it disabled and enable it as you see fit. Now, it is not always convenient to come into this menu to enable this. So what you can also do to quickly access this is pull this notifications panel down. If you're on the home screen, pull the notifications panel down and just tap right here and you are able to access extra brightness option right here to get that quick boost anytime you please. So that's fantastic. Let's move on. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to set up the navigation options for your phone. Right now, you can see that I have the gesture navigation options. So if I launch an application or go into my settings and I want to go home, I simply swipe up. It just puts me back home. And if I want to bring up my recent applications, I swipe from the bottom hold and all the recent apps show up right here and I can swipe them away or whatever, as you can see. This is a gesture based navigation. Now, some people prefer to have buttons. So what you can do is you can go to display. You can scroll down. OK, and you go to navigation bar again. These are settings you set and forget so you get the best experience for yourself. So in this case, I can have the buttons. Now I have actual physical buttons here. I don't have to swipe. I just tap and boom, boom. I'm good to go. As you can see, that's home. That's to bring up the recent apps. And this button allows me to go back in any screen that I'm in. So that's the navigation bar. You can choose buttons or swipe gestures. Now with the swipe gestures, if you want to go back, you have to actually swipe back like this, as you can see. OK, you can also enable a gesture hint. That's this bar over here. But if you don't care about that, you can enable this, disable this. And that gesture hint disappears, giving you even a more totally immersed view with no buttons, no gesture hints. You just swipe up and everything just works. The buttons used to work very good for me previously, but the swipe gestures have become much better. So now I actually use them. So that's it. So let's keep it at buttons for the rest of the video so you can see how it works. So I'm going to go home. Now, when it comes to the home screen, there's a couple things you can do here that are very important. Normally, you pinch the screen and you go to the settings and you have a whole bunch of home screen settings. What I like to do is I like to set my grid. So we have a home screen grid and an app screen grid. With the home screen grid, I have a five by five. So look at this tap. What I can basically do is I can have five apps this way and five apps this way. But if you want to add even more apps onto your home screen, you can do a five by six. Now what I can do is I can have six rows and five columns. So I can even add more applications. I can have one, two, three, four, five, six rows of applications. I like the five by five. It's nice and balanced. And you also get a nice preview. If you want even bigger apps, you can do four by five. And now you, you can fit less, but the apps will look bigger. So five by five is the way to go for me. That's one thing. One more super trick for your home screen is the ability to modify it and customize it. Now look at this. If I want to move all these applications from one screen to the other, all I do is I press and hold, I tap on select, and I select the ones that I want to move. Let's just say I want to move these five. Then I press and hold. 
they get grouped together and I can just slide it over dump it right there and they just sit down as you can see that was very easy instead of having to do one by one which is a pain in the ass and it takes time so let me show that one more time press select selects the one that you want to use press and hold boom that was super easy I don't think any other phone other than Samsung phones can do this now one more thing that's really going to enhance your ownership is again to customize your phone and what I like to do is I like to add powerful video wallpapers on the lock screen just like the one that you're seeing in the background so look at this, this is just one example so if you want to have beautiful video wallpapers so if you want to have some gorgeous video wallpapers on your lock screen what you can do is pinch the screen tap on themes okay and that's going to take you to the galaxy wallpapers store at the bottom go to wallpapers okay and simply browse and find gorgeous video wallpapers some of them are going to be paid many of them are free so what you can do is for example if i tap over here and if i say video and search a bunch of video wallpaper is going to show up here's one example right here it's a waterfall video wallpaper you just download and apply only thing you want to look for is at the bottom corner of the actual wallpaper preview screen it's going to say video that way you know it is a video wallpaper and of course if it's free you can just download that for free and you can even preview the wallpaper before you actually download it okay it's all going to be up to you once you download these video wallpapers you pinch the screen you go to wallpaper and style you tap on browse my wallpapers and swiping all the way at the bottom you're going to see them right here under downloaded you click on these and you can access your video wallpapers here even here at the bottom corner is going to say uh, video as you can see you can always click on it to quickly preview it to see exactly what it's going to look like on your screen fantastic let's move on now one more thing that i like to do that's very important for me is when I pick a wallpaper, let me just go to my wallpapers here. Let's pick a nice wallpaper. Uh, let's just say this one, the city wallpaper right here. I'm going to do it for the home screen only. Okay. I'm going to tap on preview. It shows me what it's going to look like. I click on done. Now that's going to be my home screen wallpaper when I go back. What I like to do is I like to, when I unlock my phone like this, I like to see the wallpaper right away. Many people have it this way. They have this let's uh, put a widget up here real quick they have a clock they have a bunch of applications and the wallpaper is in the in the background you can't really see it and if it's gorgeous maybe you want to see it so what I like to do is I like to create I like to pinch the screen create an empty home screen okay set the wallpaper and then pinch the screen again and tap this little home icon on the top that makes sure your home screen is actually the wallpaper so look if I were to go to any other screen when I tap home it goes back to that home screen or if I unlock my phone by default it goes to the home screen now if you don't like this you can always go back here pinch this and make this your home okay so now when I lock the phone and unlock it it is going to go to that that home screen so you can have any screen as your main home screen I like to have it so it points directly to the wallpaper now the next thing I like to do is I like to customize my lock screen so lock screen customization is pretty amazing there's a couple ways to get it done the best way is simply to go to the settings scroll down go to the lock screen and start the modification process from here so you see you have a lock screen and a widget screen so I'm gonna tap on the edit button which brings the editing options for the lock screen one thing I like to do immediately is at the bottom it says contact information I just tap a signature there okay so I can actually have my own Saki tech right there so when I tap on done and go to the actual lock screen I, it says Saki tech at the bottom it's just a way of customizing your phone now if you don't want it you can get rid of it so settings lock screen edit you can actually remove it as you can see or you can tap on plus to actually add it it's going to be up to you another thing you can do is you can tap on the clock icon here and you can pick a custom clock 
okay so great ways to customize your home screen you can also change the size as you can see which is great okay I can make it small large I can pick different fonts for the actual clock and I can change the color of the clock so you can fully customize that lock screen and make it look the way you want it tap on done and then you can go out and you can see what it looks like okay couple more things you can do go to the settings uh, lock screen you can see there's also a widgets option here which is actually very important so there's a hidden widgets menu here in the lock screen when you click on the actual clock you can access a bunch of widgets right now I have a voice widget as you can see so other options you have here is let's go back to lock screen tap on widgets I can enable weather uh, today's schedule next alarm and all that stuff and I can reorder them so if I want the weather on the top it can be on the top okay you can move them as you can see wherever you want them and then now when I go back to the lock screen tap over here I have access to four widgets the weather today's events alarms if any and my voice recorder that I can use right from here which I think is a fantastic tool alrighty so that's that let's move on all right, next up, we're going to look at the camera. I want to talk about five powerful camera features for the S23 Ultra to maximize your camera experience. Let's dive in. All right, so you guys heard that the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 200 megapixel camera. Now, here's the mistake most people make. They launch the application, like I did just now, and they snap a photo, and they think they just took a 200 megapixel photo. That is not the case. Basically, here's what you have to do to get that 200 megapixel quality and that high resolution. What you have to do is you have to press this button right here. When you do that, you're gonna see two options, 50 and 200. So what you would have to do is when you tap on this guy, you select 200 megapixels, and now when you see this option here is when you can actually take a 200 megapixel photo. So I'm gonna show you guys by taking one. So let's do one right now. We just took a 200 megapixel photo, which is gonna be a high resolution, highly detailed photo. The next option is when you tap this button again, you can actually choose a 50 megapixel option, which is gonna be not as clear and detailed, but still it's gonna be pretty good. So let's take a photo with this one right here. So that's a 50 megapixel and most people that don't know what they're doing they're just gonna go right here and they're gonna snap a regular photo so now we took three photos let's go in and take a look at these real quick so this is the first one that's the regular when I swipe up you can see we're gonna see some options some settings over here it's actually gonna show you that it was a 12 megapixel photo alrighty and then if I scroll over this is the 50 megapixel photo that I took if you swipe over, if you look over here, you can see it is a 50 megapixel photo. The resolution is sharper, it has more pixels, and the size is almost six megabytes, okay? That's a 50 megapixel option. Now, when I go back here to the 200 megapixel option, this is going to be the most detailed photo you can take with this phone. If I swipe up, we have a 200 megapixel option right here. Look at that resolution, 16320 by 12240. That's how many pixels it has when you do that multiplication. But then you look at the size, because it has more detail, it also is going to be a larger file. It's gonna be a 15 megabytes file. So that's how you do. And again, this is gonna be up to you you will decide which photo deserves a 200 megapixel shot. Most photos that you take to share on social media can be done in this regular mode. But if you wanna print a photo after you take it, you can think about 50 or 200. Or if you take a photo, let's say at 200 megabytes, uh, megapixels of a landscape, what you can do is you can go into that photo and you can actually zoom in and you can crop that image. You can uh, crop particular parts of that image because now you have so much detail. In fact, here's the crazy part. When you actually zoom in onto a portion of this photo, 
Look at all that detail. You actually see a little icon here. That's the crop icon. So if I click this, it'll cut the portion that I just zoomed into, and it's going to create a separate photo for you with the detail. So this is the original photo. I cropped in, I mean, I zoomed in, I tapped that button right here, and it gave me, let me show you, this one right here, okay? So you can do that with the 200 megapixels on gorgeous landscape photos and just zoom in and crop certain segments of that photo. All right, so that's that. Now let's move on and talk about the video. There is something similar happening on the video side. So when you go to your video, this phone is capable of recording up to 8K. And this time, not only does it do 8K, it can do 8K at 30 frames per second, and it has stabilization while you're shooting 8K videos. To activate the 8K video, you swipe over to the video, but when you go to the video, by default, you're gonna be in uh, full high definition 60. So you do wanna tap on this button here, and you actually want to pick 8K that says 30. So that's 8K recording at 30 frames per second, and then you can record that video, and it's gonna be a highly detailed, well-stabilized 8K video. Now, I'm gonna show you one more thing with this video. When you're doing 8K videos, you also have the option to extract photos from an 8K video. So I just did a small one right here. That's an eight second 8K video. What I can do is I can pause anywhere in the video. Now this is a static video, but imagine if you had a video where people were moving around, your kid was moving around, maybe you're recording a car. You can pause anywhere in that 8K high resolution video and you can tap this button here and they'll take a snapshot of that particular frame where you pause the video. So out of one 8K video, you can extract high quality images. So in this instance, if I swipe over, it saves it right next to it. So this is the photo I was able to extract from that 8K video. Again, let me show that to you one more time. Play the video, okay, pause it anywhere that you want, tap the snapshot button, it is right there, gets saved right next to it. Actually, my bad, it does not get saved right next to it. You have to go back to the gallery, go to the albums, and it's actually gonna be under video captures, which is gonna be right here. So anything you capture off of the video is gonna be saved under the album named video captures. Another powerful feature, let's move on to the next tactic. Now, another amazing trick is actually under this setting here. You see it says more, you tap on it. Now, when you look at this on any other phone other than the S23 Ultra, you're not gonna see this option that says RAW. That is the expert RAW feature that is now integrated into the actual camera. The first time you go here, you do have to download this add-on. So you click on it, okay? It's gonna bring up the Galaxy Store and you simply install the expert raw option into your camera. So you can see the description. It says vividly capture your precious moments with the expert raw. Expert raw gives you exceptional detail when you take a photo and you can actually edit them to make them much better. You can do it on the phone or you can do it in a software on your computer. So once you have this downloaded, you tap it and you get this beautiful interface, just make sure that you give it the permissions while using the application, okay? Couple permissions here. And once you do that, you get this powerful expert raw interface. You can see you can access any camera, you can access the telephoto, the three times telephoto, the regular camera, which is right here. You have the ultra wide camera and you can control every parameter of this photo taking right from here the white balance, the focus, you can do manual or out of focus. You can change the exposure compensation, you can change the shutter speed and whatever. So once you do all this stuff and you take a photo, what actually happens is the camera takes a raw photo. So if I bring this photo that I just took, you can see this is actually a raw photo. It says it right here and it is editable in a professional software suite known as Adobe Lightroom that you can download and explore if you so desire. I just wanna show you what the phone is capable of. So with any RAW file, when you edit that photo, 
you have more playroom to make that photo almost perfect, okay? I'm gonna make a separate tutorial on how to use all this stuff, but I just wanna show you guys that it is there and it is available. Now, the fourth thing I wanna talk about also has to do with the expert raw mode. There actually is a hidden feature here known as astrophotography. So go out at night, point your phone to the stars, and of course, make sure there's no clouds, okay? And here's a button right here. When you click this, it actually allows you to take powerful, gorgeous astro photos. You can even have a guide for the stars. So if I tap on show, this is what you're going to end up seeing. You can see as I move the camera in the sky, it is aligning itself with the actual stars. The stars and the guide is being aligned. Then I can put this on a tripod and take a photo. It does take four minutes minimum on a tripod to take a gorgeous photo of the uh, sky with the stars. So Astrophoto is an option in your phone that you can use. You just have to play with it, learn how to use it. You're gonna love it. And I'll let you know one more thing. When you're, when, while you're in the uh, expert raw option, you can also tap here and go from 50 to 12, okay? It doesn't allow you to do 108 for some reason in this area, but you can do 50 or 12, and you cannot do astrophoto when you're at 50, okay? So when you are in 12, you can do astro photos. When you're in 50, it gets disabled, all right? Just so you know. All right, the final thing I'm gonna talk about, let me just go to photo. This, this option can be used in photos or videos, okay? So we're gonna do with the photos. So let's go to the photo and let's tap on settings. What you wanna do is you wanna look for this option that says tracking auto focus. This thing is absolutely amazing, whether you're taking a video or a photo. So I'm gonna enable this, I'm gonna go back out. And now what I can do is, let's say this was your kid running around or your pet running around. If it runs all over the place, sometimes it might go out of focus. However, now that we have enabled auto tracking feature, if you tap on it, you see there's a square, a yellow square that is now tracking this object. So when I move it around, the focus, look at that square, it just goes anywhere the thing goes. So this object is being tracked, so no matter where it goes, and I take a photo, it's gonna make sure it is focused on this object. Let me show you one more thing. So if you go to video, you can do the same thing for video. Go to settings, Make sure tracking autofocus is enabled. Now it is not available in 8K. So make sure you go to something that's available. So full high definition at 60. So if I tap on settings, now it is enabled. Look at what happens. So if I start taking, like, let me tap on it. Now it is focused on this object. Let's say this was again, your kid, your pet, a car. You start to record and this thing moves around your camera is gonna make sure it stays focused on this object. This is a very expensive feature that you can only find on expensive cameras. But we have it available in this phone, basically as a software feature, almost free of charge. So that's a tracking autofocus for video and for photos. All right, so in this section, we're gonna be learning 10 hidden features for your Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra to further master your phone. All right, so the very first thing I wanna talk about has to do with a keyboard trick. So let me quickly launch a notepad right here. We have a test note right here, couple pieces of text. Now, one thing a lot of people do is they like to move the cursor to a specific location. You can move it here if you tap on it. You can move it here if you tap on it. Now, sometimes it is not exactly as precise as you would like it to be. In that case, what you can do is you can use this built-in hidden feature that's sitting right here on the keyboard on the space bar. All you do is you press and hold and that turns this whole area into a trackpad and now you can see that I can move the cursor exactly where I want it to go, okay? You cannot make a mistake with this method. Again, you can see the cursor is right there. Press and hold. It turns the whole keyboard into a trackpad and you can move it around as you can see. Let me put it right here. Perfect. So that's number one. Let's move on. All right, for the next tactic, you can use it anywhere you want, but I'm gonna use it in the notes application. I'm gonna show you what this is all about. 
So I'm going to create a brand new note, and I, you can see I have a piece of paper in the background here. I'm going to show you why I have that there. So let's say something was written on a piece of paper, anything, and you just want to scan that into your actual note. You can easily do that with Samsung phones using the keyboard feature. So look, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to tap right here, okay? The keyboard pops up. Then I tap this again, and what you want to do is you want to look for the extract text feature, which is going to be right here. So you tap on this guy, it actually launches the camera. So I can pick up the phone just like this, okay? I can point it at the text, and I can say... extract text once I do that it takes the photo of what I just was looking at with the camera and I'm able to paste this as you can see right here so I was able to extract the text from a handwritten note on a piece of paper you can do it for anything a book a whiteboard in a classroom whatever a menu at a restaurant it's going to be up to you all right so the next feature has to do with something known as window pinning this is an incredible feature first you have to activate it so let me show you how to activate that so go to the settings and then scroll down to security which is going to be right here security and privacy and then scroll down a little bit more and go into other security settings now all the way at the bottom you're going to see pin app option so what you want to do is you want to enable this now once you enable this you can go inside and you can get a quick tutorial but let me show you what this one is all about so let's say you're about to give your phone to a friend and you want them to look at a particular app and what usually friends do is they exit that application and go to other places that they're not supposed to do so before handing your phone over to your friend you bring up the app that you want him to see and interact with Let's just say it's going to be the Samsung Notes application. You tap over here, and once you enable the option to pin an application, you're going to see this option that says, pin this app. So you click on it, and now this app is in fact pinned to the screen. And to unpin this application, you have to swipe up and hold, okay? So now, for example, your friend cannot exit this application. He cannot go up. You can see I am unable to uh, access anything else other than the app that he's supposed to work on. Now he can try to unpin this application by pushing this up and holding it, but that's not going to work because it's going to ask you to put your PIN number or your fingerprint to actually unlock that application. Once it is unlocked, then you can escape from that application. But when you give it to your friend, you can pin it and make sure he or she is restricted to that application only and they're unable to exit unless they know the PIN number or you put your fingerprint, as you can see. Okay? Fantastic little feature. Now, one more thing you can do with your phone is you can actually see the exact refresh rate of the screen right on the screen. So what you would do to enable this feature, first, you have to activate a hidden menu. So what you do is you go to the settings, and then you go all the way down, you go to about phone. Now, this is the settings you are going to enable you're not going to see it right away. You have to activate it. So go to About Phone, tap on Software Information, and then tap on the bill number seven times until that menu activates. You're going to pop up at the bottom that tells you it has happened. Then when you go out, it's going to be right here under Developer Options. You click on it, and you scroll down just a little bit. All right, just a couple of cards down here. It's going to say Show Refresh Rate. So when you enable this, now you can see the actual refresh rate of your phone. Right now, it is 120. When you tap it, it becomes 120, okay? In the lock screen, it's 20, uh, 96 and 24. So when you're not using the phone, it drops down to 24 to save you battery life. But when you are using the phone to get you that smooth scrolling, it stays at 120. But just to give you an example, if I go to settings and go to display, let me turn this off for a second, all right? And if you scroll down just a little bit, actually no need to scroll down right here, motion smoothness. If I go from adaptive to standard, you can see it is going to switch to 60 hertz, okay? And when I don't touch it, back to 24. So, but when you, when you are using the phone, you're going to get the set refresh rate. So I'm going to go back to the adaptive for 120, and you can see as I use it, it shows 120, 
when I stop using the screen, it drops to 24 to save you battery. And again, if you want to cancel this feature, you go back into the developer settings. Let's go back here at the bottom. Scroll down just a little bit. Uh, it's going to be right here, show refresh rate. You just disable it, okay? Great little feature to play with your phone. Now, one more thing I want to show you guys in relation to the keyboard. A couple things, actually, uh, is if you go into the... Let me go back to the notes application over here. Okay, here we have a note. And I showed you guys how you can do some precision cursor control with the space bar. But you can also do this. When you tap this button here, you actually get access to a bunch of applications. And there's some incredible options in here. One of them, if I swipe all the way over is known as the text editing feature. When you click this, you actually get a little joystick here that you can control to put the cursor anywhere and also do some precision edits like this. So let's say I want to remove this from this sentence. I can tap on select, then I can tap on the arrow. It's going to start to select that word, okay? And then I can cut that portion out. And I, of course, I can go back down here, right here, and paste it also if I wanted to. But this cursor control allows you to do some precision edits using an actual joystick or the actual keyboard. Okay, again, you select. If you want to select something, you tap on select. And I can select just a portion of that text and then cut it out and make my modifications that way precisely. All right, the next hidden feature, you go to the settings. Okay, you scroll down. You look for general management, you tap on it, and then you go to Samsung keyboard settings, you tap on this as well. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, you can see you can tap on this high contrast keyboard option. You can tap it and tap it again. Now you can actually change the color of your keyboard uh, to any one of these four options available under the high contrast keyboard. I can tap this guy, tap this guy, tap this guy, okay? That's one thing you can do. And related feature, since we're already in the menu, is the theme feature. So I can tap on this one, and I can actually have a lighter theme, as you can see, a solid light theme, a dark theme, a solid dark theme, or a color palette theme, as you can see. So you can modify your keyboard. It's something you use all the time, and you can make it look a certain way using the standard built-in features in the phone itself. Additionally, what you want to do is you also want to change the layout of the keyboard. Tap on this guy and look at this. I can actually uh, hide the number keys, as you can see. Some people don't like these number keys. If you hide them, you can access them from here, okay? It takes less space on the screen. Now, I like them, so that's fine. You can even add alternative characters if that's what you want, okay? So you can see the keyboard changes a little bit to show you what's going to be available with this key if you press this button okay so it just gives you a quick glance so that's great now if you go back you can also change the size and transparency so look at this here's my keyboard for some people it's too big or too small you can just change the size as you please to make it easier to type as you please so i can make it much smaller or much bigger and i can even move it to one side if you're always using your phone with one hand you can use the one-handed keyboard mode. And again, you can put it on the left or right. It's going to be up to you. I prefer to have the full screen, but have it a little bit smaller so I can see more of the content and less of the keyboard. Fantastic feature. If you want to reset it back to what it was before you made the modifications, tap on reset, goes back to normal, tap on done, and you're good to go. All right, in this section, we're going to be talking about five security features you want to change on your phone right away. Let's dive in. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to go to the settings. You want to scroll all the way down and go into battery and device care. And then over here, you're going to see something that says device protection. So you want to enable this and then you want to turn this on. So basically what this is, is this is a malware, virus and spyware protection that's built into the phone. It just needs to be turned on. So when you tap on turn on, it's going to give you a quick pop up. Just tap on turn on. And then what you can do is you can do a first time scan. And what that's going to do is that's going to scan your entire phone to make sure that it is clear of viruses, spyware, or any kind of malware. It actually scans the system and also every single app 
that's installed on your phone. So I'm gonna cancel this for now, okay? But just make sure you run this. Maybe you can run this at least once a week or maybe twice a week. Or if you want, you can tap on this button here, okay? Go into device protection settings and simply make sure this is enabled. So that's gonna auto scan apps every day and also auto scan when installing new applications. So either you do this automatically or you can do it manually, it's gonna be up to you, okay? When this is running in the background, it could slow your phone down a little bit. So in my case, I prefer to do these things manually, but regardless, the S23 Ultra is such a powerful phone, it's not gonna slow your device that much. Now, I will let you know one more thing about the device protection. Certain carriers and regions block this. So if you don't see this on your phone, for example, if you have a Verizon phone, you may not see this phone, but it is available on many Samsung S23 Ultra variants and, and with many carriers. But I do know that some carriers and regions do block this feature, unfortunately. Now there's one more thing you wanna do in relation to device protection. So after you actually turn this on, go to the settings and go to about device care, okay? Make sure you click on update security engine. So when you tap on update the security engine, it actually updates the device protection we, we just talked about to the latest version. So in my case, the latest version is already installed. Make sure you update that security engine so the device protection is up to date. Let's move on. All right, next option, back in the settings, you wanna scroll down just a little bit and you wanna to go to security and privacy and then scroll down just a little bit more and go into secure Wi-Fi. Now this is a special setting it comes free with Samsung phones. It's basically a built-in VPN server for your phone. So when you connect to any Wi-Fi that you think is not secure, such as if you go to a coffee shop, if you go to the airport, or if you're connecting to any public Wi-Fi that is not yours, you can use this to securely connect to that Wi-Fi, which is gonna encrypt the traffic on your phone so the person that manages the other Wi-Fi cannot see what data is being transmitted from your phone. Believe me, they have ways to do that. So you do have to give it a permission for the location. So tap on continue, all right? And then it's gonna say ready to protect. You're gonna see this interface. And basically every time you're out there and you're about to connect to a public Wi-Fi in a coffee shop, airport, whatever, you can first tap on protect and then connect to the Wi-Fi and then do your things and all that's gonna be secure. Now I do wanna let you know, you only get one gigabytes of traffic per month for free, but if you do click it, you can purchase more if you so desire. I don't recommend it. What I do recommend you do is use it intelligently. So let's say I'm in a coffee shop. If I'm just gonna browse the web, looking at bestbuy.com, I don't have to have secure Wi-Fi. That's not really private information. But if I'm gonna go into one of my bank accounts and log into my actual bank account to check my balances, then I would actually, let me stop it, click on protect, do my banking, and then click on stop again. And the reason I'm doing that is to save my protection plan for the month. But of course, like I said, based on your needs, you can buy additional protection if that's what you want. Let me see how much that is. So for example, uh, for one month, it's $2. It's unlimited protection. For 24 hours, it's 99 cents. This would make sense for somebody that is conducting business and they just need it for 24 hours, but not for a month. So it's gonna be up to you. But again, personally, I just use it for simple things like logging into sensitive apps, but I stop the protection as soon as I log out, okay? Any kind of regular browsing like Facebook, Twitter, you don't have to use secure Wi-Fi. All right, next thing you wanna go to the settings. Okay, and then you wanna to go to security and privacy again. All the way down, you're gonna see other security settings. Tap on it, scroll all the way down, and make sure security policy updates is in fact enabled as you can see. So this is gonna make sure your phone is secure with the latest security policy from Google. And also, let's take a look at this guy right here. If I click on this one, you can see this is gonna allow updates from Samsung, not Google, from Samsung to be installed automatically to improve the security and performance of your phone. So you can have these enabled so it just happens automatically. And if you're in here, you can tap on check for update. If there's any updates, they will apply. But you can see right now, because I'm on auto update, 
uh, it says I am already up to date. So that's fantastic. This portion here is something new. So that's great that they have that there as well. Now, one more thing that's also very crucial is this option right here. Back in security and privacy at the bottom, look at this over here. It says install unknown apps. So when you click this, what you want to do is you want to make sure basically all of these guys are turned off. You have to turn these on selectively and turn them off when you're not using them. So for example, if I go to the Chrome browser and if a website is asking me to install an application, if I have this enabled, it's just going to install the application without a warning and that could be a malware. So make sure this is turned off. However, sometimes when you go to Chrome and you're browsing, you do need to download applications if you know what you're doing. In that case, you can turn this on temporarily, allow the installation of unknown app, and then come back and turn it off for additional protection. And you can see you can do this with any one of these available applications. So if somebody sends you an application package as a Gmail attachment and you know that to be valid, you can have this enabled, but most of the time it needs to be disabled so that unknown app cannot be installed unless you give it express permission. So just something to be aware of that it's here, okay? If you ever see this pop up for no reason, you do know that something is trying to install an application that is not known by Google, is it's not known by Samsung, it's just some random application. So at least you know what, what, what's going on and how to manage it. All right, the final thing I'm gonna talk about, again, has to do with security updates. So go back into security and privacy, okay? Go into updates, and this one right here is specifically for Google Play system update. So you can see this one over here is all the way from November the 1st, so maybe it's about time I check for an update. It might be available, it may not be available. But we're gonna check it by tapping this guy right here. It's gonna say checking for updates, and if it's up to date, then we're good to go. But looks like we did need an update. So it has been applied, but it's gonna ask me to actually restart the phone to complete the update. So you can see it's actually very important that I check this because if I hadn't checked this, it wasn't happening automatically for some reason. So I was actually out a couple months, so now what I can do is I can tap on restart, it's gonna update Google Play with the latest security patches, I'm gonna be good to go. And now in the final section, we're gonna be talking about a crucial feature every Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra needs to enable, let's dive in. Enabling this feature will make sure that if you ever lose your phone or if your phone gets stolen, you will be able to track its precise location and retrieve your phone instead of taking a $1,000 plus loss. Using this feature, you will also get access to a powerful command center, which you're looking at right now, that will allow you to erase all the data on your phone remotely and much more. So let's dive in. First, let me show you how to enable this feature and then how to use it and all its capability. All right, so here's what you wanna do. You wanna to go to the settings and then you wanna scroll down into security and privacy, tap on it and then scroll down. And here's the option I'm talking about. It's known as Find My Mobile. Basically, if you ever lose this phone, you are able to track its precise location from any other phone or any computer. And on top of that, using this feature, you can remote delete your phone if you're scared the person might actually hack it. So I clicked on Find My Mobile, and you can see it says, allow this phone to be found, and right now, it is not set up. So what you do is, once you're in this area, if it is not set up already, you click right here, then you're gonna see this menu, now you are gonna be logged in with your Samsung account. This is the same account that you're gonna to use to locate this phone if you ever lose it. So here's the option you want to enable. Again, I'm gonna show you how to enable it and I'm going to show you how to actually use it. So let's enable this thing right now. Now once you do enable these features, you also want to enable a bunch of these features based on your needs. This is the remote unlock feature which allows you to unlock your phone remotely if necessary for any specific reason. So if you do enable this, it's gonna give you a quick info on what it actually does. For example, this allows you to unlock your phone remotely and actually control your phone remotely 
if that is something you ever need. Now, if your phone gets stolen, you're not going to need that. So in this case, I'm just going to keep this canceled, but it's an option. Now, this one right here is the send last location. Enable this guy. It is going to keep sending the last known location of the phone to you. It's going to go to the Samsung account and the associated email. Now, this one here is one of the best options. This is an offline finding option. So let's say somebody stole your phone, but they have the phone set to offline mode, meaning it is not connected to any network. With this option, if you enable this, it is still going to allow you to actually locate that phone, even if that phone is not connected to a network. This is an amazing feature and you should have it on if this is a concern to you, okay? By default, this should be always on, but then you can turn these on based on your needs as well. So once you set all these things up, let's say your phone gets lost. How do you actually locate it? There's a couple ways to do it. You can do it on your friend's phone. You can do it on a laptop. You can do it on a tablet. Doesn't matter. What you do is you go to this URL right here. Smart things find.samsung.com and you log in with your Samsung account. Now let me show you how that works on a computer as an example. All right, so you can go to any computer, PC or Mac and launch any browser. And the first step would be you would type in this URL. You can write this somewhere down in case you forget it. So once you plug this URL in, you're gonna be at this website. This is Samsung Smart Things Find website. So the next step would be to sign in. You click sign in. You're going to put your username and your password. And once you do that, you're going to be dumped onto this website right here. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I'm going to show you the most important part. So the first time you log in, you might see this tutorial that says, Welcome to Smart Things Find. It'll tell you what you can do and all that stuff. And behind here, uh, the blurred area is actually a map of exactly where your phone is. Now, in my case, I just blurred this out for security, but I can click on this Get Started right here, and I get the full interface, as you can see. Now, with this interface, on this side, you can ignore mine. You're going to see a lot of products listed here simply because I run a reviewing channel here, so there's going to be a lot of products. But you're going to see all your existing products, your Galaxy Watch, your Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, or any other Samsung product you might have will show up on this corner right here. But the actual control panel that's the most important is right here on the top right. And you can see you have several pieces of information about your phone. It tells you what's the current battery life of the actual phone. It tells you when that information was updated, at what date and at what time. And you can always click on refresh to get an update, which I did just now. I'm gonna get an update in a couple of seconds here, as you can see. So, let's say you lost your phone. The first thing you can do is you can click on this button here, and you can track the location of your phone. And what it's gonna do is, it's going to show you the exact location of the phone in the map right here. And the best part is this entire maps is from Google Maps, so the location tracking is going to be super accurate. So you use this option to track location. It's going to show you exactly where the phone is on the map. And then you can go and get your phone, but you'll get the exact location. Now, the other thing you can do is you can erase the data of the phone remotely. If I click this right now, it's going to ask me for a confirmation and it's going to wipe everything out from my device. And sometimes that's good to have just in case you're scared if your phone has a lot of sensitive data. Now, what I recommend you do is before you erase data, remotely back it up. This is the best part with this interface. It's logical. So you can back it up first, and then you can delete it. The backed up data is going to go to the cloud. So the person that has your phone is not going to have access to that. And then you can erase the phone, and now that person has nothing. But when you get your phone back, you can restore the backup from the Samsung account. So incredibly logical situation here. You can also lock and unlock your phone. By default, I would just click lock. So if somebody got your phone, it was unlocked and they're using it, you can click lock, it's gonna lock them out. 
they're not going to be able to go back inside unless they know your PIN number or your password. You can also, if you think the phone is close by, maybe it's under a table or something, you lost it, or maybe it just fell somewhere, you cannot see it, you can have that phone actually ring itself so you can identify its location by sound. And another cool feature is the retrieve messages and calls feature. So let's say you lost your phone, but you're still wondering, who called me and who messaged me? Who knows, maybe when you lost your phone, you might have been in an emergency situation where you were waiting on a response from somebody. So you can retrieve calls and messages right from here in case you need to. And finally, from this control panel, you can click this button and you can extend the battery life of your phone, which will help you because let's say you're tracking your phone. But let's say you look up here and your battery life is like 12%. You want to click this button and that's going to extend the battery life so you can track that phone for longer before you're actually able to go get it physically. So that's basically what we're looking at here, this powerful menu, the Find My Mobile system for your Samsung phone. Just enable it, write that URL down if you ever lose it or if it ever gets stolen you are able to track it and do all these nice things with the control panel. All right, so we have finally reached the end of this video. I really hope you guys learned some amazing things in relation to your S23 Ultra. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know. For now, guys, have a fantastic day.